And the former Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General of Edo State, Henry Dagbo, has attacked residents of Edo State to shun violence ahead of the state governorship election. Henry Dagbo, while speaking exclusively to Plus TV Africa, accused the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, of sponsoring thugs against members of the All Progressive Congress. Idagbo says the recent violence at the gates of the Palace of the Above Benin is a desecration of the palace, a blight on the image of the Beninese, and should never have been allowed to happen. I like to advise Edo people to eschew violence. All the Ebo Stone, all the Austin V Boot, all the Motari that Obaseki is parading now as his talks, they should ensure that no Edo life is lost. If Obaseki is interested in talk, he should bring out members of his family. Because I'm not going to bring out my children to fight as talk. So I don't want to fight anybody. I believe this is a contestation where we debate. It is better for us to judge judge than to war war. So Edo people should eschew violence. Our youths, and I'm appealing to these uh, uh, three uh, young men that I know, they know me, they should not allow themselves to be used to perpetuate violence. Because governor come, governor go, we Edo people must remain. Our corporate identity as a state will remain. So I plead with Edo people, there should be no violence. Let us go and vote on that day. Whatever the outcome of the election, it's an election. Whatever the outcome is, we, we accept the, uh, the outcome, and then we move on. I plead with our people, there should be no violence. What happened at our Albas Palace is a desecration of the highest order. We, the Beninese, we venerate our Albas. We don't joke with our Alba. Our Alba is not like, with due respect, like other kings and Albas in other kingdom. Us is special, and we know why. We venerate, we, we venerate him. So our palace, the palace of the Alba of Beninese, is not a place where you come with talks. It's not a place where you shoot guns. It's, it's a desecration, and at the appropriate time, our ancestors, we ask him to come and do the appropriate propitiation to the ancestors. In what looked like a dangerous twist in the troubled Edo State House of Assembly, lawmakers opposed to Governor Godwin Obaseki on Thursday impeached the Speaker of the State Assembly, Honorable Frank Okie, and his deputy, Roland Asuru. When asked for his reaction, Speaker Okie simply said what happened was a non-issue. The impeachment followed the swearing-in of all members-elect who were not inaugurated last year at an emergency plenary session which took place at the Conference Hall of the State Assembly. Twelve out of the 14 members-elect who was not sworn in last year took their oaths, administered by the Deputy Clerk of the Assembly, Mr. Tom, Mr. Tom Efezohai. After the swearing-in of the 12 members-elect, Victor Edoro, representing Isan Central Constituency, was elected as Speaker of the Assembly at the emergency plenary session attended by 17 members loyal to the former National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Zushumole. Honorable Emmanuel Agbaje of Akokoedo Constituency 2 was also elected Deputy Speaker. And joining us live is Libra Zushuma, legal practitioner. Uh, we also have um, Akigbe Oseogo of Preach Stone and Gray's LP. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to start with um, um, Barsa Akigbe. The recent events in Edo State, um, uh, uh, mostly at the House of Assembly, has been referred to as drama. Can you help break down the whole plot for us? Okay, good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, well, you call it a drama. Um, it started with the proclamation of the executive government. Um, and then that proclamation was challenged at the Federal High Court, it's in Port Harcourt. And the Federal High Court came to a finding that the proclamation issued by Mr. Governor was in tandem with the provisions of the Constitution. And the governor was subsequently restrained from issuing another proclamation. Uh, shortly after that matter, um, another suit was instituted by um, uh, Honorable Sabo Edoro, uh, Washington Osifo, and Honorable Crosby Erigo. That matter is currently pending in court, and the issues uh, before the court um, arise from the process of inauguration. Their contention is in that matter is that we were excluded from the process of inauguration that took place on the 17th of June 2019 in the Hallow Chambers. Um, their contention also is that um, there was no notice 
whatsoever that such an inauguration will take place. So as you are aware, only nine members of the House were inaugurated on that day. Now, the point is, if the matter is still pending in court, um, and uh, since it's up to this, I'm careful not to fall into the temptation of making comments about the matter. But the point is, if the matter is still pending in court, one is at a loss as to how the other 17 members okay. will uh, then take steps Mr. to Kibbe. impeach the speaker. Mr. Akibe, apologies. We're, we're going to have to um, reconnect with you um, in, a, in a moment uh, so that we can get a better uh, connection. So just hold, hold your thoughts there. We'll, we'll get back to you in less than a minute. Um, I'm going to then, of course, bring in um, um, Mr. Oshoma here. Um, there's a lot that has happened in the last um, few weeks, uh, more drama than anyone maybe had expected. Um, what is your own breakdown of what has happened so far? Yeah, um, first and foremost, I would say that um, a time will come if care is not taken the way we are going very soon. Litigants will refuse to obey court orders. The way courts and very senior members of the bar are uh, abusing court orders, procuring court orders in some cases. A time will come, people will rather resort to settle their differences outside of the court. And we're already seeing it happen. It is very sad. I had at some point talked about it also, that the courts and lawyers should try as much as they can to refuse to be used by politicians. It's not every time that the court wants to dabble into matters. A situation where even lawyers now forum shop. You have a federal high court in Edo State. You leave Edo, you go to Port Harcourt to shop for another. What had been happening in Edo State from the inauguration, whether a court has endorsed it or not, to what happened last week had been a charade to say the least. We are all lawyers in Nigeria. We have been seeing how inaugurations are done. Yes, the governor has issued a proclam proclamation. It's unfortunate that the court is even endorsing it. A proclamation had been issued. But do we celebrate or do we do inaug inauguration nocturnally? Somebody had won an election. We know what it takes to win an election in Nigeria. How people, you know, um, celebrate inauguration. I've attended inaugurations in, you know, states, other states, including Lagos State. So one would have expected, after, you know, after proclamation is issued, all of the members should have been notified. But that had passed. Also, I've also listened to arguments for and against that the members, the other members who were not inaugurated, had refused to come for inauguration. And at some point also I had argued that there's need for them to cop for inauguration. But seeing what happened in Benin, was it on, on Wednesday now, on Thursday, it shows that those members there were intentional, they were attempt to ensure that they were not inaugurated. Uh, and I also, you know, um, I listened to my learned colleague and uh, drawing conclusion that since the matter is in court, um, they ought not to. No, I, that for me, I, I wouldn't want to draw conclusion. Even what transpired on that day too, for me, is not an inauguration. I would say that categorically. But and so, what had happened? I expect the, all the parties to find a political solution to this impasse, to this quagmire. Let. A, and a, and a proclamation had been issued. Allow the other members to come before whoever had been elected at that, uh, the point of, um, uh, what do you call it, um, the first inauguration. Yeah. Let the speaker that was elected, since a court had made a pronouncement endorsing that inauguration, even though I disagree with it, but the court had pronounced it. Let that speaker inaugurate other members, and then they can take a vote. If they want to impeach the existing speaker, so be it. It's a game of numbers. But to intentionally refuse them from coming for inauguration and claim that they refused to come with what had happened that day, for me, is an assault on, on, on our collective you know, responsibility. And it shouldn't be. And that's why I have consistently also maintained that the executive, whether at the federal or at the state level, should, as much as they can, stop interfering with legislature. And the only way we can correct all of this is for us to tweak our electoral laws to reflect transparency. Otherwise, 
This is just a tip of the iceberg. This is a pointer to what will happen come 2023. Right, we're going we're gonna, to, um, of course, uh, bring back um, Mr. Higby now. Um, is, is it that our law, uh, welcome back one, uh, by the way. Is it that our law keepers, including the police and lawmakers, are now um, sort of pawns in a bigger um, chess game? Or are they merely ignorant of the law? Well, the truth, the truth must be told. Um, it's a game. And this game is born out of desperation to take over the reins of power by all means. But just to also add that the, there is a condition precedent for members of the House to take their seats by the 17th um, schedule of the 1999 Constitution. They ought to, first of all, uh, disclose their assets and abilities before the Code of Conduct Bureau. Now, after that is done, they are to send evidence of that declaration to the clerk of the House. These 17 members, or the 15 members who were not inaugurated, had not met with that condition president as at the time the inauguration took place. Now, the point I was making is that if the inauguration, if the, if the issue of the inauguration, the legality of the inauguration is before the court, and in fact, part of their prayers in that matter is to ask the court to set aside the election of the speaker, then why would you go ahead to set up a parallel house and then cause the impeachment of that same speaker? It then means that you are questioning the legality of an issue. Yeah. And then you are going ahead to take laws into your hands to ask for self-help. Okay. Now, what the politicians are simply doing, they are playing on the intelligence of the Nigerian people. And they are causing a lot of upheavals and unnecessary unrest. Okay. I'll go ahead to let you know that the... The, the deputy clerk of the house who allegedly uh, carried out that inauguration process is a retired public officer. In fact, his retirement is currently being challenged at the National Industrial Court. So one is at a loss as to how you are challenging your retirement in court and then you are going ahead to perform your duties. All right. The we'll, Constitution we'll, is clear. We we'll, would, we'll, we'll, of course, the, you know, get back to that point. Process. Yeah, I, I, I want I want to see if um, um, uh, Mr. Oshoma agrees with you um, on your you know understanding of the whole process and how it has played out. So so let, let's go to um, Mr. Oshoma now. Let's... I, I differ with him to some extent um, because my learned colleague is drawing conclusions I wouldn't want to draw. Um, the matter for um, declaration of assets is purely within you know the confines of the assembly, and so I am, don't have knowledge of those ones and I wouldn't want to draw. I'm looking at the legality or otherwise of the entire process, starting from the very beginning. And like I said, I started by saying that a time will come, the way we are going as lawyers and judges in Nigeria, a time will come when litigants will no longer want to resort to courts. They would want to take the laws into their hands. And we have already seen politicians doing it and aided by very senior lawyers, including senior advocate, and you know some of us who feels who oh, we are um, maybe because we have interest. You know, in the first place, you you inaugurated a house clandestinely, and then some members, even members that were inaugurated, claimed that they were dragged, almost practically dragged to their own inauguration. That would have been a pointer to all of us to say, no, just like what happened in Bauchi, let's find a political solution to this thing. Let it be a game of numbers. And so, if it is that they don't want a particular speaker, let it, so, it be so. That passed. And then the next thing we had was that, you know, he caught in Port Harcourt. For me, it was laughable. And that passed. Secondly, some members came. For them, you said they, they had refused to come for inauguration and that the house was going to be fumigated and the other members were sitting in God knows where. Some said they were sitting in government house, others said they were sitting in the old assembly. And the court had consistently heard that the business of the assembly must be conducted in the place designated 
for it and not wear anywhere you put a maze. And so that is why for me it was shameful and laughable when some people gathered and put a maze somewhere and said this is the assembly. If there were no clandestine inauguration that first and foremost abused that process, you wouldn't have another, you know, um, how do I, absurdity. Desecration of our democratic norms and values where you sit in a sitting room and put a maze and say you are inaugurating. The person that ought to have inaugurated these other members ought to have been the speaker elected in that quote-unquote nocturnal inauguration. Let's, since a court had pronounced that, yes, it was okay. But when you now hear that these members are coming and then you go bring togs, bring um, 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 granite in the glare of the entire world and yet you suddenly want to renovate the assembly that day. The only inference you, a reasonable man can draw is that you want to deprive these people yeah. from being inaugurated. I'm not in Benin. And so, one would have expected that leaders of thought in that state should call, every, call everybody to order and say, you know what? All of this that had happened is an abuse of the process. Forget whatever the court had said yeah. before now. Forget whatever you had done. Let us come together because it is for the development and the betterment of the state. And then even the question, my learned colleague also talked about the uh, uh, retirement or the sacking of yeah. the deputy speaker. Because there are allegations that once you go against or you are not in support of the existing structure, the existing government, you are either sacked or suspended. Right. This shouldn't be so. Because what we are gradually pushing the state to is a state of precipice and anarchy. And if care is not taken, some of us who feel that we sit down in the comfort of our law firm, in the comfort of our office, when there is chaos and anarchy, you won't even have... You know, you won't even find a way to that comfort. All right, let, let's, you know, let's bring in... Because we're all being involved. Yeah. And so what we should be preaching is that, look, let all parties shed their sword and let's find a solution a to this A political solution, like you said. Yes. Uh, Mr. Akibi, I, I, want, I want us to uh, speak about this. Now, he described it as clandestine and... Uh, uh, nocturnal uh, inauguration. Uh, I want to know if you agree. You know that it, you know, it, it looked funny somehow, some way. And then looking ahead, how do we discourage um, politicizing such a process that you know you would expect would infl um, instill confidence in the citizens, but now does the opposite um, uh, at a time like this? Okay, I would not agree with the greatest respect with Mr. Osoma that. Um, the operation of 17th of June was a clandestine process. And the reason is obvious. The issue as to the legality of that inauguration is a matter that is pending before a competent court of law. We cannot sit at this level to uh, prejudice the decision of the court on that matter. But the point we are making is that the politician must learn to respect the institutions of government. The Constitution is clear on these issues. The court has made pronouncements on these issues. We cannot therefore begin to pick and choose the uh, provisions of the Constitution that is favorable to us. And like Mr. Oshoma said, which I agree with, it is the ordinary man on the street that is affected by all this drama. Now, I agree that all the parties at some point will have to sit down to uh, forge a pact. So they, they have to come together. Yeah, and that's to what I was just going to ask, you know, what, what your idea of a political solution would be. Go ahead, please. I didn't get Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to ask what your idea of a political um, solution to these issues would be. So just go ahead. Let, let's hear you. No, the, 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 the political parties, the political parties, the various players in the election, they have to call their supporters. They have to call their members to order. You know, the idea of um, using talks to uh, stall the process or the violation of the fundamental right of citizens because uh, you are fighting Have to just, if uh, you have to emasculate people to compel them to support you, then 
and what you get. Okay, uh, let, let's uh, go back to um, uh, Mr. Oshoma so, so we can uh, quickly, of course, round up. What would you describe as the best political solution to this? Um, bearing in mind that there is a lot at stake here. Yeah. Lives, you know, of people, violence, which, um, and which of course... Is why, uh, which is why I had said that this idea... <coughs> excuse me. This idea of consistently insisting that the other members refuse to come for inauguration, and yet... You take steps to stop them from being inaugurated. For me, as a layman on the street, is a black lie that would not, shouldn't even be said by reasonable people. And then also, as lawyers, we should learn not to draw conclusions. The solution to all of this is, yes, let the, let the leaders of thought in the state call all stakeholders. It is not compulsory that one person must remain the speaker. It's a game of numbers. And, and so, let the uh, Okie, the one that they said they had impeached, let all the leaders of thought call these people to order. Let Okie inaugurate these other members. And let, at that, let them be devoid of, let the executive not interfere. And at that sitting, let them in, uh, elect, either endorse what had been done previously, or if they feel otherwise, elect another speaker. Uh, but uh, the uh, idea uh, of once, imagine a situation where Several members, because some members had gone to pay courtesy visit to, to uh, a rival uh, a candidate, the next thing, six or seven members sit somewhere and say they have impeached a deputy speaker. That also should be condemned by even those that are condemning the um, um, charade called inauguration by the 17 members. And that's where you, that is how you find solutions to issues like this. Quickly, so, quickly, how, how possible is this political solution um, with what is at stake for? A very tall order, very tall order, except parties will agree to drop sentiment and look at the issues from a bigger picture. If you look at the issue from the bigger picture, you agree that, look, it's a game of number. Whoever wins we should win. And, and so to that extent, you have said the 17 members have refused to come for inauguration. Now, allow them. Don't be involved. Let um, Okie inaugurate them since, you know, he's been elected by the few that were smuggled into the chambers for inauguration. After inauguration, let them lock their doors and elect or ad endorse whatever had been done before now. But until that is done, we're consistently going to have this charade where some will sit here Others will sit there, and then you claim yours is constitutional, the others will claim theirs is constitutional. But what you're going to have is that the entire world will look at us and laugh at us that for, for uh, close to 20 years, we have still not been able to perfect yeah. our democratic right. practice norms and values. Libra Soshoba, thank you so much uh, for, of course, discussing with us. Um, of course, uh, thanks also My to... Ahigbe uh, Oserogo for also joining us. The news continues shortly after this break. Stay with us.